Hello everyone, welcome to a new lecture. In this video, we are going to talk about deformation. So, what is deformation? Well, deformation is changes in the shape or position of a rock body in a response to a stress. So, if you have a stress and acts on a rock, the rock will respond by changing shape or position, and this is called deformation. I know you will say, well, rocks don't actually deform. I can get a rock and press on it with my finger, or I can press on it with as much as power I have. The rock will not change its shape. But to the contrary, nature can create huge forces that can act on a rock and can change its shape or position. Therefore, it can deform it. It's all about the amount of stress that acts on a rock. So in that case, what is a stress? Well, a stress is the forces that deform a rock. So any force that can act on a rock and can actually deform it, then that is a stress. So deformation only occurs whenever the stress acting on the rock is greater than its strength. But if the strength of the rock exceeds the stress that acts on it, then deformation will not occur. So imagine you have a silly putty, and this silly putty is not very hard. It's kind of plastic. If you press on it with your finger, the silly putty will deform. But if the silly putty is very, very strong, and the strength of the silly putty exceeds your finger's strength, then the silly putty will not deform. Just like that, if the force that acts on a rock is less than the strength of the rock, then deformation does not occur. And the opposite is true. So, based on the stress and something else that is the nature of the rock and the conditions that the rock is in, we get different kinds of responses from a rock. So, we can get a rock to fold, to flow, to fracture, and to fault. So folding, flowing, fracturing, and faulting is a response that a rock can give us when stress acts on a rock. And based on these responses, nature has created different kinds of geological structures. And they are these. So we get folding, we get faulting, we get joints, we get rock cleavages. So these structures are structures that develop as a result of deformation. When there is a stress acting on a rock and it deforms it, the rock can create folds, it can create faults, it can create joints, and it can create rock cleavages. In later lectures, we'll look at each of these in more detail, but let me give you a quick description. Folds are just folding of the rock, just like here you have a wavy-like structure. If you have a bit and you press on it from both sides, if the rock is in the right shape and right situation, it will fold. But if it's not in the right situation, the rock will break, just like here. If you have a rectangular rock and you press on it from both ends, if the rock is very solid and brittle, if you press on it from both ends, the rock will break instead of folding. But if the rock breaks and the broken parts of the rock does not move, then you create joints. And here is the difference between joints and faults. In faults, the broken parts of a rock move, just like here. This part move upward and this part move downward. But in joints, the broken parts of a rock don't move. And this is the difference between joints and faults. Lastly, we get rock cleavages. Rock cleavages are a geological structure that develop as a result of deformation. And the way they are is rocks consist of minerals and crystals. These crystals have a favorite plane of breaking. When deformation occurs or when a stress acts on a rock, the crystals in the rock will break in their favorite plane. And as a result, they develop rock cleavages. We will say more about each of these in later lectures. So let's get a little bit deeper into stress. How many kinds of stress we have? Well, we have two types. We have confining stress and we have differential stress. Confining stress is uniform stress in all directions. So if you have a confining stress acting on a rock, all it does to a rock is either making it bigger or smaller. Since you have uniform stress in all directions, changes will occur the same in all directions. But differential stress, on the other hand, is just like this. You have unequal stress in all directions. As a result of differential stress, what you get a rock to do is changes in one direction that is not the same as changes in the other direction. In this chapter, we are more concerned with differential stress because there are geological structures that develop as a result of confining stress are not very interesting. All you get a rock to do is get either bigger or smaller. But differential stress can create very beautiful and interesting geological structures. They can create folds, faults, they can create rock cleavages and fractures. So we are going to look at the types of differential stress that there is. Well, we have three types of differential stress. We have compressional stress, we have tensional stress, 
and shear stress. We have tensional or tensile stress. So let's look at each of these in more detail. The first one, compressional stress, is just like squeezing the rock. So if you have a rock like this and you put forces at both ends or you basically squeeze it, what happens to the rock is this. Basically the rock will get squeezed and anything in it will also get squeezed. So imagine you have elongated crystals in the rock. Just like here, you have elongated crystals in the rock. What happens to these crystals is very interesting. They will get deformed too, and the compressional stress will make the grains to get fatter in a direction that is 90 degrees to the compressional stress, but they will shorten in a direction that is parallel to the compressional stress. And that is how compressional stress can deform a rock. Anything in the rock will get deformed. The other type of differential stress that we have is tensile stress. This is exactly the opposite of compressional stress and this is basically pulling the rock. So if you have a rock and you pull it from both sides, you basically put a tensile stress on it. And anything in the rock will get deformed too, but they will get deformed exactly opposite of the compressional stress. So imagine you have elongated grains like this. If you put a tensile stress on it, everything will become like this. So in a direction that is 90 degrees to the tensile stress, everything will shorten, everything will get smaller. Smaller. But in a direction that is parallel to the tensile stress, as you can see right here, everything will elongate, will get longer. And this is how tensile stress can deform rocks. The last type of differential stress that we have is shear stress. Shear stress is movement of one part of the rock past the other. So imagine you have this rock and you have this grain in it. If you only move this part, while making the other part still, that is shear stress. So if you have a shear stress acting on a rock, the grains that are in a rock, if you have a circular grain like this, what happens to the grain is it will turn to an ellipse because you have a shear stress. But for tensile stress, what happens to the grains in the rock is they will get shortened in a direction that is 90 degrees to the tensile stress, but they will elongate in a direction that is parallel to the tensile stress. But compressional stress, what happens to the grains in a rock that is deformed due to compressional stress is that in a direction that is 90 degrees to the compressional stress, everything will get bigger or it will fatten, but in a direction that is parallel to the compressional stress, everything will get shorter. And that is how differential stress can deform a rock and anything in it. And with this, we come to the end of our lecture. So to recap the whole lecture, 